So now let's go ahead and implement an HTML button that toggles between viewing WYSIWYG and HTML. And it's going to look just like any of the other tool buttons. It'll be in the toolbar the same way, but it's going to have a custom behavior. So um, in our rich text editor, basically we're going to start with all of the stuff that we have for edit tool buttons. But instead of using exec command for the execute, we're going to have to write some code here. And then it's going to keep track of its own state. And so it's going to update based on whether it's showing HTML or showing WYSIWYG, um, which I guess I'll call text. So um, let me start by copying this edit tool button function. And I'm going to create a HTML tool button. And uh, let's see what the, so this part's the same. And this execute is going to have to change. And then that should be OK. And then let's go ahead and start by adding a mode variable. And initially we'll be in HTML mode, which means WYSIWYG. And then for our update function, we always know we're going to have a command, so we don't need to check that. So let's go ahead and untab that. And then here we're just going to say if mode is equal equal text, then we'll show it as active. Else, we'll set it as inactive. So what happens when the user clicks on this button? Well, first we're going to check if mode is equal to HTML, then we want to switch to text mode, else switch to HTML mode. And the first thing we'll do is set mode equal text. mode equal HTML. So if we're displaying HTML markup and then we want to switch over to seeing the raw HTML, the text mode, the first thing we want to do is get the current inner HTML. And here we need access to the editor. So um, let's go ahead and pass that in with the constructor. Since it's a custom button class, we can do that without affecting anything else. So that's going to be editor inner HTML. And then we want to set the content editable to false and then switch and then set it to true again. So editor content editable is false. And let's go ahead and create a pre tag. And I have a style for that. Um, so that's going to be the text, HTML text. And we need this break word here for Internet Explorer. So pre.class name is equal to HTML under text. And then we're going to set the pre.inner text equal to our HTML. And then we can set it editable again. And let's see if it works so far. So we haven't done the other half yet, but we have enough to test. Oh, we have to actually create one of these guys. So right before we create our buttons, we're going to manually create an HTML editor button and then insert it into the list. And title will be HTML, and command 
we're handling ourselves. And image is html.png. And then we'll add that to the toolbar first thing. And that should be everything. Let's uh, make sure the event listener gets called. Yeah, so as soon as we create it, we attach the event listener. So let's go ahead and run it, see if it works. So far, so good. And we'll add a little markup here. And click. And not quite. So let's go ahead and see what happened. Enter HTML editor. So we forgot to pass editor in when we created the thing. So we need a second argument. And this actually, we need to reorder our code a little bit because we need to create the editor before we can do that. So I think we can just move that up here before we create our toolbar. And now let's try it. Okay, so no errors, but we also didn't get anything. So let's see what I'm missing. Let's go ahead and put a breakpoint on our execute function. We're getting here. So we'll step. So mode is text. And to our HTML. It's good. Oh, um, we forgot to replace the uh, pre tag for our inner HTML. So um, let's go ahead and fix that. So, first, I'm going to clear away all the old HTML. And then I'm going to append my pre tag. And now let's try it. There we go. So uh, now we need to do the other side. So when you click on that again, we want to switch modes back. So let's get the inner text. So first we want to get this pre tag, and then we want to get the inner text of the pre tag. So pre is equal to editor dot first child there is only one of them the root pre and then we're going to say text is equal to pre dot inner text and then we'll make the editor not editable And then we'll set editor.innerHTML equal to text. And then we'll make the editor editable, editable again.
And that should be it. Let's go ahead and try it. So HTML. And let's change this to a H1. And click back. And we have an H1. Center it. And let's go ahead and add a paragraph. Mm. That didn't quite work. So I think uh, I think we messed up a little bit on our pre tag here. So that is our pre-tag. So let's look at the elements. Ah, we needed to set the content editable of the pre-tag, not the editor. So we don't want to change the editor, we want to change the inside of the pre-tag. So let's go ahead and continue. And, and, and instead of setting editor.contenteditable, pre.contenteditable, and then this one should be fine. We don't need to do that because we're getting rid of the pre-tag. So let's go ahead and try it now. And we'll center that. And then we'll add another paragraph tag good there it is okay so now we're in good shape try an h1 and an h2 and an h3 Great. Submit. And it seems to work. So we have one problem left, which is that uh, the activated status of this isn't getting updated. So we need to add the HTML button to our list of editor buttons. And uh, this, this loop right here is going through all of the buttons in buttons and calling the update method and mostly it's calling this update method in uh, um, edit tool button but because of polymorphism we can just call the update method in HTML tool button without worrying about it so we just need to make sure that our HTML button gets put into the list of buttons so we are actually going to need the tool here, so let's go HTML tool is this guy and HTML button is equal to HTML tool dot get button. And then when we create our list of buttons here, um, we're going to want to add our HTML button to the front. So right here, we'll say buttons.prepend HTML tool. 
And then also, when the user clicks on the button, we're going to want to call this.update. And I think that should work. Let's go ahead and see if it works. Oh, got an error. So prepend is not the right function. So let me check. Uh, it's jQuery. Is it push? Yeah, it's push, I think. Okay, so let's go ahead and try that. Okay, so far so good. And, oh, it's activated now. That's good. And if I seems to work. Good. So that seems to be everything.